What's good, y'all? It's your boy Jet. We in hyper mode. We got another creepy and scary reaction video. You already know, y'all. Hit that like and subscribe button. Let's go! So NASA told us that falling stars are basically dying stars or shooting stars, etc. But in the Bible, it tells us how these stars that are falling are actually demons that were trapped in the firmament, are angels. When they fall, it is because they have nothing else to hold on to or because they are being cast down or cursed. This is footage currently from Italy with stars falling from the sky and everybody's asking questions on what is happening or what's going on and they think it's aliens. For those who still don't understand, read this. It is also said, when humans worship the creation instead of the creator, things like this happen. When they worship things like the sun and the moon. And it also is said that the stars, the sun and the moon, have a firm place. They're stuck there for eternity, so they cannot fall. So look at this video. Pay attention and take in the knowledge. For those who still don't Therefore, understand. Therefore, having heard this, this glorified the Lord God. And again, I questioned the demon, saying, Tell me how you can ascend into heaven, being demons, and amidst the stars and the holy angels intermingle. And he answered, Just as things are fulfilled in heaven, so also on earth are fulfilled. The types of all of them, for there are principalities, authorities, world rulers, and we demons fly about in the air, and we hear the voices of the heavenly beings and survey all powers as having no ground or basis on which to alight and rest we lose strength and fall off like leaves from trees and men seeing us imagine that the stars are falling from heaven but it is not really so king but we fall because of our weakness and because we have nowhere anything to lay hold of and so we fall down like lightning in the depth of night and suddenly, and we set cities in flames and fire into fields. For the stars have firm foundations in the heaven, like the sun and the moon. Now, did you pay attention what that said right there? For the stars Stay have blessed. firm foundations in the heaven. The truth about falling stars. Let's get straight into what's going on everybody man my reaction to that, that could is be the only explanation of why it could be in the firmament for entertainment purposes only don't come for me that has to be the only explanation of why they're pinned inside the firmament this was written thousands of years ago let's go biblical prophecy fulfilled man tune in let's get straight into it so basically, there's crystal quartz bursting through streets, okay? And we all know how in the Bible, God said that he will bring the treasures of the darkness out of the secret places of the world so we know that he is the Lord. Look at this. And I will give you the treasures of darkness and the hidden riches of secret places that you may know that I am the Lord. Isaiah 45 3 if you guys don't know we are all connected to the universe okay we I didn't know quartz could grow that fast or was that powerful I know a while back they had an entire quartz crystal cave I believe they found out this is very interesting in the year 2000 the cave of crystals was discovered by miners excavating a tunnel for a mine in Mexico the main chamber contains some of the largest natural crystals ever found in any underground cave. The largest one so far, measuring about 36 feet in length and weighs over 55 tons. The amazingly huge quartz in this subterranean cave have become this large because of the extremely hot temperatures inside of the underground cavern. And this encourages microscopic crystals to form rapidly growing much faster than we're used to seeing in cooler locations. Just gazing at these gigantic, beautiful crystals 
one can't help but get carried away imagining what else awaits further exploration deeper inside these caves. In the year 2000, the Cave of Crystals was discovered by miners excavating a tunnel for a mine in Mexico. The main chamber contains some of the... Can everyone hear me? Yes. Uh, the first one right here, we call it the lighthouse. And it stands at 11 feet tall. What? The one over here we call the castle. And that one stands at 14 feet tall in 35 feet of water. And the deepest part in the cave is back there. And that drops off to 55 feet. It doesn't look that deep though, right? No. Mm -hmm. The reason that is, is because just the first inch of water, that's fresh water from the water dripping in, and then below that, it's all salt water. So it kind of gives it a magnifying effect. Very deceiving. And the water temperature is 69 to 72 Fahrenheit year round. Never changes. About 21, 22 in Celsius. Below the salad mice. Can everyone hear me? Yes. Uh, the first one right here, we call it the lighthouse. Wow, I didn't know you can actually swim in those caves. That is a must see. Have you guys been there before? I definitely want to go. It just looks like like a scene straight out of Tomb Raider. Let's get back in these waters. This cave in New Zealand has the craziest pool of crystal you've ever seen. Nettlebed Cave is one of the deepest caves in the southern hemisphere, going down about 1.2 kilometers. The cave itself stretches about 38 kilometers and takes two days to get through. If you're claustrophobic, this is not the place for you because cavers have to stay overnight in a chamber called Salvation Hall. But those brave enough to enter get to witness these incredible pools of calcite crystals. This is a limestone cave, which is made up of calcium carbonate. And you guessed it, calcite is actually a calcium carbonate crystal. These types of crystals can grow in flowing water, but when a cave has no drainage for the water to exit and a constant supply of calcium carbonate dripping from the ceilings, you end up with this. This cave in New Zealand has the craziest pool of crystal you've ever seen. Nettlebed Cave is one when I almost passed out and had two panic attacks in a cave. Okay, so boom, I flew to Tucson for the Gem and Mineral Show. Now I'm a Midwest girl, so I thought I wanna see some cacti, maybe a cave. So I found a cave tour, didn't fully read the description, just booked it, how bad could it be? That's when I discovered my toxic trait is I think I'm Dora the Explorer. And of course I dragged my boyfriend along, let's call him Boots. All right, so this is a colossal cave, first part of the tour is very cute, going well. Nothing too crazy, what I expected found some exposed calcite. I love crystals, so I love that. Also, we used a black light on the calcite and it kind of glows. Super cute. Now that's when things start to get a little sketchy because apparently it's called the ladder tour. In all fairness, it's clearly my fault because I overlooked that when I booked it, but here we are. So they had me in boots crawling through tiny little spaces, climbing up ladders over cliffs. The helmets, I thought they were cute. They're not for show. I bumped my head like five times. It was pretty humid, so that's where the panic attacks came in because I felt a little claustrophobic in the small spaces. But I did some breath work and I survived. Shout out to me. 9 out of 10 would recommend. 
story time about when I almost passed out and had two panic attacks in a cave. It wouldn't be easy, you know, exploring a cave, but that's definitely something I would like to do as well. You know, it reminds me of those movies you always see. Those what, what if a monster might be in there waiting or something? You know, you never know. I don't know. That's just what be running in the back of my head. But anyway, let's get back into these waters. actually love minerals it reminds me of that dude on breaking bad that was collecting all those minerals you guys seen that show shout out to you but uh yeah that's what that's a trade i can see myself getting into in the future being able to identify and see different types of minerals who knows how many of them are really out there You all have been asking for it, so here it is, Moon Map Reaction. By Jetski Chuck on Creepy Teak Talks that will reshape everything. If you're following along with us so far what the moon map is saying that if you look at the moon it could be exactly the exact mirror of our world so basically they're saying the map of our world is a reflection on the moon that is what a moon map is let's get into it and see what they're talking about on this creepy and scary TikTok. It lines up for entertainment purposes only it lines up The moon map. You guys all requested this, the moon map. So buckle up and sit tight. We're going through the entire moon map on this episode.
hit that like and subscribe button. It cannot be all this time hiding in plain sight. A distorted, unreliable yet steadfast reflection. A quasi-photographic image of both our known world and what is this? This is the unknown world. Thank you, Sturgios, for all your work. Sturgios has mapped out each continent to the minutest detail. His work is meticulous. He has mapped time zones, seasons, flight paths and distances. The first true flat earth map. And it is of utmost importance, primarily due to the unknown landmass over here, that Sturgios has named Terra Vista, after the Aberno Monte landmass of the same name. Why have we never heard of this land before? I gotta interrupt them. Is that where the Tartarians are? Look at me in my face and tell me that can't possibly be where the Tartarians could be at. Come on now, stop playing with me. If the area here is our known world, then the realm is absolutely enormous. But wait a minute. Sturgis' presentation of our known world here maps the five prominent circles of latitude. We see the Arctic Circle, the Tropics, the Equator, and the Antarctic Circle. And Sturgios has mapped the Sun's concentric journey around these circles of latitude, mapping seasons and time zones with the utmost precision and accuracy. So what's going on? The Sun and Moon cannot journey the entirety of the land masses presented here because it would take too long. Does this landmass not have its own sun? Or perhaps the moon is not a map of the greater realm after all. But not so fast. We need to spend some time breaking down Sturgios' discovery here. How the image on the face of the moon was and is formed, when it was formed, and why are all questions that no one can answer. Nobody knows apart from the deceivers in higher places. But there are a lot of things hidden in plain sight that bring us a little closer to having a better understanding of this mysterious phenomenon. First of all is the nature of this image. It is a composite image. You are witnessing multiple images simultaneously when looking at the face of the moon. And these images are akin to a type of X-ray photography. There is also evidently a lot of distortion and optical illusion present in these images. No one can offer an explanation as to how this composite image has formed, nor has anyone ever provided a satisfactory answer as to what exactly the moon is. And rightly so, for if they could, we would not be in this mess in the first place. But how this composite image phenomenon came to be is not important for our journey. It's what it shows us that is important. And perhaps it is best to leave the moon shrouded in mystery. Whether a natural or artificial X-ray photographic image, what is important is its composite nature. The image we witness here is a combination of at least two fixed images that are superimposed upon one another. The first image we are seeing, as Sturgios' groundbreaking work has shown over and over again, is a skeletal outline of our realm's land masses. So could he say that these could be in a different dimension is what he's saying this moon map could be. So we're seeing two different images on one moon. I don't know, man. Y'all gonna have to help me out with this one. Akin to an X-ray. And in a way we have never seen before. In this image, we see all the continents of land we associate with Earth. Or what is more appropriate 
the known world, world. represented, represented by, by the dark, dark areas in the image. image. And we, and we also, also see vast, vast bodies, bodies of land, of land and, continents and continents that we, that we are completely, completely unfamiliar with. Sturgis, Sturgis revealed, revealed that if you treat the moon as a mirror image, image it is, is and flip its image, image like, like you would with any reflection, then you then can you start to map out how known man is, is with utmost precision. precision. And this and is this exactly, exactly what Sturgis has done. done. Map in the known world, world captured, captured in the moon, moon down, down to great, great lakes, lakes and deserts. And deserts. The striking, the striking similarities, similarities between our known world, world and mass, and that, and that captured, captured on the moon, moon are far, far too exact, exact for it to be any kind of coincidence. coincidence. It, has it has been, been right, right in front, in front of, of our faces every single day, literally. It is likely that no one has connected the dots here before because of this particular unknown landmass. First of all, it's the nature of this image. It is a composite image. You are because of this particular unknown landmass, which Sturgios has appropriately named Lumeria. And this landmass is very important because we know that it does not exist anymore. Theories of Lumeria's existence as a lost continent have been around since the 19th century, with most plotting its location somewhere around the Indian Ocean. Those in the 19th century also spoke of another lost continent, called Mu. They are one and the same thing. Old maps of Mu plot the land exactly where it is on the moon. And in 2007, Masaki Kimura discovered huge structures, including pyramids, castles and roads, on the ocean floor, some way from Japan a location very similar to where Lemuria is plotted here on the moon. The con we covered that. If you guys watched my underwater video, I literally have that on my title about pyramids underwater. Go back and check that video out. We might. Matter of fact, don't even do it. I'm going to make a new one in 4K. But anyway, back to this. Man, this has got some truth to it. Entertainment purposes only. And this really will change your reality. Because if you think about it, the pieces are adding up. He's got a pyramid underwater where landmass used to be there. Oh my goodness. This is dark waters for real. Continent sunk years and years ago. And this is very useful because it means that this image is not an active reflection, but a moment captured in time before the continent sunk. The second image we are simultaneously witnessing in our moon is that of the firmament itself. Yes, you heard me right. The moon is the only known official image of our firmament. The face of the moon is a composite image, and we have to separate the images to fully understand what we are seeing. We have the landmass of the greater realm, and this is one image from one angle. And then we have another image from a different angle. I can only illustrate this by showing you. This specific area of the moon is primarily what gives the phenomenon its spherical 3D appearance. The heliocentric liars love this area of the moon, and they have used it as a weapon of deceit against us. It is not a crater with rays, like they tell us. Look closer really look this is not the markings of a spherical object it is the apex of the domed firmament from within the dome watch closely this is the composite image on the moon presenting both images simultaneously and this is an interior of a hemisphere dome and now you see if you align the central apex point of an interior hemisphere dome, then it becomes quite obvious. If you erase the remaining vector lines of the dome, then it becomes really obvious. And once you see it, it becomes very hard to unsee. We got a lot more parts to this. Don't worry. Take take your time. I'm taking my time with this one. This is I'm in no rush today. I got plenty of time. So go ahead and get you something to juice, get you some chips or something, because it's coming raw. 
I have it. Hey, this is it. You are getting precept it for real, y'all. Precept. Dude, this is if you look at the moon and you take the two different structures, you got the firmament as structure one and you got the actual maps as structure two. You form those together and you have the moon. You have two different images i get it now and i see why y'all been yelling moon map do the moon map i got you and i see why now this is i'm seeing this for the first time with you i don't have time to rehearse these i just pick a topic i hit the creepy scary TikTok, and i say that boy for later that's my formula that's my process i don't like oh yeah i'm gonna react to this no we we changing our realities together Y'all, uh, this is, there's four more parts to this. I'm just letting y'all know. This is a long one. It's in depth. Um, You guys like it when I do these longer videos. So, hey, let's get it in. Let's have fun. We kicking it, man. I got no one else to talk to about this. I talked to someone about today. Like, hey, get away from me, dude. You're scaring me. All right. All right. I'll back up. But y'all, y'all some writers, man. Y'all on these jet skis right next to me, man. We gunning, hitting the nitros, man. Let's go. It, it isn't, isn't a sphere. sphere. That is an optical illusion. It is the markings of a hemisphere dome. And not only is this the interior apex crown of the firmament, it is also a reflection of the center of our realm below. This area of the moon lends its spherical shape because of the so-called rays that emanate from it. But as you can see, it is an optical illusion. The rays are actually hemispherical ribs stemming from the dome's crown. This area in the middle of these ribs is not a crater. That is the vortex directly beneath the highest point of the dome. The controllers have named this area Tycho. It was given this name, we are told, by Jesuit astronomer Giovanni Riccioli in 1651. If it was not for Tycho, then the controllers of our realm would have a very hard time convincing millions that they lived on a giant spinning ball. And like with everything else, they have used Tycho to hide things in plain sight. For instance, another 17th century Masonic astronomer named Pierre Gassendi called it Umbilicus Lunaris, the navel of the moon, which is interesting as North mythology uses the same simile of the navel to describe Virgilmere, the whirlpool in the center of our realm. Arthur C. Clarke's Space Odyssey, one of the most famous science fiction novels of all time, features a crater on the moon named Tycho. In the novel, scientists find that there is a strong magnetic field emanating from the crater and discover that it is coming from a black cube monolith buried 15 meters within the crater. A black monolith, a rupus nigra, a magnetic black rock. If you separate the two images, then you can see clearly how they are in fact two images of two different angles that somehow have ended up superimposed on each other. It isn't a sphere. That is an optical illusion. We do not see any oceans or water mass captured in the first image, which suggests there is some kind of X-ray radiation at play. We don't see the vortex at the center in the first image for this reason. And again, no one knows how these images were formed. But if some kind of radiation beams were responsible, then the first image, the land masses of our greater realm, were most likely captured as the rays hit the firmament. And as those rays were reflected into our ionosphere and began forming the plasma mass we call the moon, it is likely that the second image was captured. And that is the image of the firmament, of the structure existing above us. And that's why we can see the outline of this structure, the stars beyond this structure, and the reflection of the vortex and other great deeps below. The moon is a masterpiece of distorted perspective, a plasma embodiment 
of as above, so below. And it's going to take a lot of work and careful consideration in smoothing out this distortion to try and get somewhere close enough to create a proper map of the world we live in. And because the moon is a disc-like mass of plasma, the first image of the land presents some curvilinear distortion. And you can see it here at the edges as the land begins to warp and wrap slightly. A lot of serious work needs to go into creating a flat projection of this distortion. But it shouldn't be too difficult because the distortion is only slight around these edges and that's why Sturgios can map the circles of latitude, seasons and time zones very accurately. A map without the distortion may look something like this. But important questions remain. If the central vortex is absent from the land image on the moon, then why has Sturgios plotted the land we assume is Hyperborea over here, which is not in the center? And what about all this other land? The sun and moon cannot journey above all of this land, as it would take more than 24 hours to circle all of this, and we know the paths of the sun and moon. We do not see any oceans or water mass cap and the big one. The one you've been desperate to ask about since uncovering the only map we have. Where is the ice wall that you flat earthers constantly bang on about? Let's start with Hyperborea. And here's where many flat earthers may experience cognitive dissonance. Although Sturgios has plotted Hyperborea here, there is no proof that this is the true Hyperborea. There are a lot of different land masses in this region, and we cannot be sure. It pains me to say that Hyperborea may not exist in the way we have come to believe. Mercator's Hyperborea is likely the work of the Masons to throw us off the real path. And this is what our purpose is all about, isn't it? Digging for the truth is difficult business, and as we dig deeper, we come to realize that artifacts we found before may not be as useful or important as we first thought. We all get it wrong, but stay with me, no need to despair just yet. It is very interesting that the Aberno Monte map was added to the Stanford University map collection and made available to the public in 2017, the same year the Flat Earth was gaining huge traction, and people were starting to wake up. It's also interesting that it has been arranged as a planisphere. The huge individual sheets of this map were originally arranged as an atlas projection, but David Ramsey purchased the map in 2016, and the team got to work scanning each sheet individually and processing them digitally to wrap around a sphere. Perhaps the release of Monty's marvelous map was an attempt to keep flat earthers thinking Hyperborea was located at the North Pole, and to perhaps bring back any that was sitting on the fence and hadn't truly woken up yet. A very subtle act of manipulation. And the big one, the one you've been desperate also perfectly explains how wow taking all that in for entertainment purposes only the moon map definitely has some validity do your own research on everything but if we look at the past continents that could have possibly been there for me the underground pyramids they just didn't go underwater and build those pyramids underwater at some point that was above land and they constructed stuff on top of the land and then a flood or whatever happened got water on top of it so we're struck stuck with all this stuff that's buried underwater and they're showing us the moon map took like a ancient photo of that and then projected it plasma on top of the moon <laughs> you see the boat hey that was tight and projected it on the moon you know it's man uh that's tight you know because if you think about it from a biblical perspective say for instance 
everything was made through vibration through you know i said let there be light and there was light what if that was the sun and moon when that was created that was a vibrational frequency when that took place so while everything was getting created first the first vibrate vibrational frequency that could have hit the moon could have been the solid structure so we got the land masses and everything so when that frequency bounced back and hit off the firmament and came back again that's how we got our second image that's just a thought that just was the first reaction that came to my mind you know i'm not the sharpest tool in shoot I'm not the sharpest tool in the shed, but you know, some stuff just comes to me and that just was my initial reaction. You know, I don't know, but it is extremely interesting to try and figure out what really is the moon. Is it made out of plasma? And it is basically an ancient photography. It was the first photo ever, ever took. By God. By Yahuwah. It's the first photo ever took. Y'all want something? Here. Flow. In front of y'all for the first time. Y'all can see it. Until I come back. Until I send, send my son back. Flow. <laughs> oh my goodness. Let's keep it rolling on these waters, man. flat earth till i send my son yahushua world of frequency and vibration right now we will address the why this is all here and how it came to be in, in a later episode electromagnetism also perfectly explains how our sun and moon work on flat earth as mentioned previously the sun and moon are not spherical bodies of rock or gas. They are disks that rotate our earth much like a clock, but in a coil-like spiral dictating the seasons and climates as they go. When the sun is beyond the equator ring, the northern hemisphere experiences summer and the southern hemisphere experiences winter. Inversely, when below the equator, the southern hemisphere experiences summer and the northern hemisphere experiences winter. But up until this point, we have not explored how our celestial bodies of light can actually travel in such a clockwork fashion. And as gravity is a hoax, this mechanism becomes even more mysterious. But again, electromagnetism and engineering holds the answer. We are told that the Earth's magnetic field extends from Earth's interior out into space, where it interacts with solar wind, a stream of charged particles emanating from the sun. We are told that the Earth tilts on an axis, and it is as if there was an enormous bar magnet placed at an angle through the center of the Earth. Mostly, this is all lies, but there is a strong magnetic presence on Earth, and it appears to be located in the north. And that's why compasses point north. On our flat plane, however, north is actually center. South is the entire continent of Antarctica, the ice wall. And east and west, the circular rotation around the north center with the south on its exterior. That's why it can seem that you are traversing the entire earth when traveling east in a straight line. You end up where you started not because the earth is a globe and you are traveling in a straight line, but because when you keep the compass pointing to the east, you are in effect traveling in a circle. Let's now have a look at electric motors. Magnetism. You will know that the opposite poles of magnets attract and the light poles repel. You may also know that a magnetic field appears when current flows in a conductor. Briefly connecting this wire to a battery deflects the compass's needle. Electricity creates a magnetic field. This effect can be used to create an electromagnet. This coil is the electromagnet in our simple motor. Connecting a AA battery, we can see the magnetic force from the coil moving the magnet in the compass. The coil is polarized. One side is north, the other is south. Let's start construction of our motor by creating the coil. Slide the permanent magnet into place. It doesn't matter which pole is up. 
touching the leads to a single AA battery should cause the coil to bounce. If the coil is balanced and all electrical connections are completed, the motor should start. This is a commercially made DC motor. It is significantly more powerful and efficient than our simple motor. It accomplishes this with strong permanent magnets and large coils wound on an armature and a method for controlling the polarity of the coil's magnetic field. As you can see, electric current produces a magnetic field. Inversely, magnetic fields can also be used to make electric currents. It works both ways. What came first in terms of Earth is really a matter of the chicken and the egg, and we will explore this and the source of magnetism in a later episode. To understand how the sun and moon function as electromagnetic luminaries, it is necessary to look at the Faraday effect. Let's switch it on, let's see what yeah, it does. Sure. Through this coil of thick wire, we're about to pass a huge alternating electric current. On top is a one kilogram aluminium plate. So we hear this noise, what's that noise? It's the vibration of the plate, because it's vibrating at uh, two times the frequency of this, of this, of this Wha one. Whoa! <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> <laughs> How does it do that? To find out, I've come to the place where it all started, the Royal Institution in London. This is the key to Faraday's magnetic lab. It's amazing that a lock still works. From the 18th century onwards, it became a storeroom, which is why it survived, and it survived intact, all the joinery, giant electrical magnets, uh, exactly the same as Faraday. Uh, so this left is it. exactly as Faraday would have had. That's right. Yep. In Faraday's time, it was known that electric current creates a magnetic field, but it remained an open question whether the reverse is possible. If a magnetic field could generate electric current, Faraday answered this question with his most famous apparatus: Faraday's electromagnetic induction ring, which is this. In August 1831, Faraday wrapped two coils of insulated wire around this iron ring. By 1831, you could not go down to your local electrical hardware shop and ask for it to have meters of insulated wire. You had to insulate the wire as you went. And so as you pushed and pulled the wire in out of the ring, you had to insulate it. It takes 10 working days, which is a huge investment of time. But the investment paid off. When Faraday connected a battery to one of the coils, he saw a brief pulse of current in the other coil. And when he disconnected the battery, he saw a pulse of current in the other direction. He realized that current was induced in the second coil only when the magnetic field through it was changing. And if they hadn't been wrapped on the same ring, Faraday may have noticed that the two coils repel each other when the current is induced. And that's due to the interaction of their magnetic fields. Which brings us back to this. Through the bottom... Also perfectly explains how our sun and moon work... Dang, I wanted more of that video, but unfortunately that was it. I try to find the full length of that video and post it on a future video but man don't come for me this is for entertainment purposes only man this is that man it's not looking too hot man if you believe in that you know the gravity man it's not looking too hot man looks like that book is winning what is that Huh? Is that a giant tree stump? I know that's not a mountain because look how square it is. That's out in the stratosphere. What is that? Is that beyond the ice wall? Huh? I don't know. Y'all tell me in the comments below what is that? It looks, it looks like it's going out. Rainbow Comet, but explain the quantum force field surrounding it. It looks like a pure Kamehameha wave.
That's got to be out of Thor, Isengard, Odin. <laughs> I couldn't tell you. Do I think it's real? Yes. That's exactly what it is. It's hard to break that CGI because look how it's bouncing with the frame. You know, the CGI is bouncing with the frame of the video. So that's kind of hard to, you know, what is going on? What is it? I, a fallen angel, a, a powerful one. I, I couldn't tell you. Man, are you kidding me right now? Biblical angel caught on camera, man, what? So basically these men were working on a regular day on their shift and thought they seen a UFO. But I thought out the box, these look just like the biblical angels. Look at the feathers. Look at the eye. Man, y'all cannot tell me this is not a biblical angel. Come on. There's so much stuff happening in the world and so much stuff coming to the light. It's just in our faces now. Like, I don't think you guys understand how scary this is getting. I'm not in fear because I know the truth. But once you wake up and really start seeing what's going on, it's just going to become regular to you guys, man. And it's ironic. I just dropped a video on this. But what do you guys think? Is this a UFO? Is it a biblical angel? Am I tripping? Even though I know I'm not. Let me know underneath. But other than that, Keep your spirits clean, not stay pure, stay meditated. And most this reminds me of that dude on Super Smash Brothers. This is the boss on Super Smash Brothers. This angel looking thing, you know, as I'm telling you, man, they, they knew something when they made this. They was on to something when they made this, yeah. The moon phases. They say there is water above. H H H M M M M. I would never be able to mo look at the moon the same again. Look at all those old landmarks on it. The first ancient photograph ever took. One giant receipt.
Bible says in Proverbs 27, 17, iron sharpeneth iron, so a man sharpeneth the countenance of his friend. Iron sharpens iron. But the problem is a lot of these guys are claiming to be men are more like plastic than iron. The only thing they can sharpen is their little eyeliner pencil they like to use because now they want to wear makeup or they want to dress up like a female or they want to be feminine and masculinity is under attack. One of the greatest problems in our country today is men just won't be men. Be a man. Stand up and be a man. Do what we're supposed to do. Do the right thing. Raise your children in a godly home. Fear God and teach your children to fear God. Not fear him that he's just some being that wants to strike them down, but to fear God have a reverent holy fear like you would your father. Which brings me to another point. A lot of men have no respect from their children. They don't have a reverent holy fear of their dad because their dad's too busy laid up at the bar at somebody else's house when the family is at home eating supper. Be a man. Come home and spend time with your family. What about those that don't want to work? They expect their wife to do all the work while they just sit around and are lazy. You're teaching your children to be that. It's time for us to realize if we're going to be iron that sharpens iron, then we've got to be strong. We've got to be tough. We've got to be bold. And we've got to follow this. The Bible says in Proverbs 27, 17, iron sharpeneth iron, so a man sharpeneth the countenance of his friend. This is a short video showing the holy hole at the center of the flat earth, which is directly below the star Polaris, a.k.a. the North Star. This is also the location where the Aurora Borealis, positive magnetic energy seen as moon lights in the night skies, especially for the emoji guy, shoots out of the earth plane and can be seen in many countries that are closer to the center of the flat earth. We did see something protruding. If we, if you go back probably about 10 minutes ago, we did see something protruding in that uh, stratosphere footage of that weather balloon. Remember that thing? I was like, man, is that a tree stump? We go back here to what my man got on this video. Oh, no. Where is it? There it is. If we look at this. Tell me that boy ain't protruding. I'd be fading myself up, man. I did it kind of low. I meant to, you know, I'd be, I'm trying, man. I'd be fading myself up, man. I'd be saving the 30 bucks, you know, but we out here, you know what it is. The faces in the sky by the moon this is a trending and going viral on my page. And the lady who shot this footage actually reached out to me and I talked to her and um, I'm going to be tagging her in the comments below because she's the one that took the, the video, okay? But as you can see, videos have been pouring into my inbox. Many, many, many people have captured faces. Now, I do have to say that our mind and our brain tends to piece things together and make something appear. So I understand how you can look at the sky and find stuff in the clouds, but a lot of people also have messaged me that they've been having trouble sleeping, that strange things have been happening at nighttime. Now, I do feel like there's no coincidence, uh, no coincidences, but what I would like to say is normally at nighttime is when the enemy comes and sows seeds in your mind when you sleep. So even last night, I had a visitation and a bad dream uh, early in the morning. I had to get up and pray. So I want to say supernatural things are going on around us, and this is the evidence. 
I'm not seeing every video out there is true, but I'm saying there's so many things going on that you have no idea. Open up your spiritual eyes and wake up, okay? So I'm here to tell you if you're having trouble sleeping or if anything is hexing you or causing you trouble at night, all you have to do is to wake up and to just plead the blood of Jesus and to speak the name of Jesus over that circumstance. So I break any bad energy that's over you right now. Next to you. Now the video is about the faces. <laughs> How can she see the CGI that, y'all? I know y'all see that damn face. Yeah. Y'all better buckle up. So are you still Repent. Hey, it's not funny. We we in the end time. This for real, man. Y'all see the moon? Look, man. Y'all see the face, man. Look. Y'all see the face, man. This ain't funny, man. Y'all see that face coming from that moon. Joker face next to the moon. Let me know what y'all think about this. Can somebody please explain this face next to the moon? Watch this. Watch this. Watch so this, America. On. What the hell going on here? Because I'm tired of it. It's a whole face next to the moon look like the Joker. Look at this. Look at it. Y'all see it? Ain't that something? Look, it's not going to get no better than that, y'all. That's that's as best as it's going to get. What is it, man? Y'all put in the comments below what y'all think this possibly could be. Oh, my goodness, man. Hey. Quit playing with me. Man, y'all see this here? Come on now. I can't we can't make this up right here. Look at that there. Shout out to Beyond Earth too, cause she seen the same thing this week too. Same thing. Who else we gonna see up there? We done seen a Joker. We done seen a Scream Doom. Who else they gonna have up there? Jason, God damn me, who else? What is going on, America? Y'all leave a comment below on this one. We got a whole joke of who is that? That dude is hilarious. We can't make this one up, man. Is this Blue Beam America? Please leave a comment below what you think about this one. Yikes. I ain't even going outside no more. I swear. Oh, wait. Oh, wait. Joker. Hey man, that's it for today's video, man. If you made it this far, drop the 100% great video, man. We're going to do something new. If you made it this far, drop the 100% great video. That means you watch it all the way. And I know you watch my newer videos because if you watch my older videos, I say just 100. But now we need 100 great video. Tell the algorithm this is what the people need to see. Y'all feel me? All right, now, man, this was a long one, man. I love these long ones. I appreciate y'all kicking it with your boy on this one, man. I got to chop this one up and get it ready for y'all. But as always, man, y'all.
be safe you know i appreciate you guys this video is for entertainment a disclaimer this video is for entertainment purposes only do your own research on everything and with that being said time to go in hyper mode let's get out of here i gotta go